interesting thing, the lack of AP damage from Gambit. This Shivana can go full armor, and I don't know how she's gonna die. Well, I, I wonder that normally when you've got a good mix in there, to be honest with you, but when you've only got that attack damage coming your way, this could be uh, hard to break from Gambit's side of things, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see how things develop. This is another question mark for us. Kennen in the support role for Edward. I actually expect him to do a lot of work, especially early game, where he can has he has a lot of harass, he has a lot of good poke, and at the same time, he is having a Doran shield, so he's very tanky, and he's gonna be hard to kill for Conway and Wolves and the bot lane. So I actually expect him to put a lot of pressure on them. Well, let's see, the 130 mark comes by and the ward trinkets all coming into play as we Get a pretty standard right now, wards across the map. If you look down to the bottom lane though, both duos have got there as early as possible. This was exactly what went a bit wrong from Fnatic in the last game. They weren't in the lane at 155. It's the trick to do to simply get early accuracy. See a fight! Yeah, they're gonna break this one out. And actually Edward and Genja pretty much been shared in terms of how much damage they're taking. Edward already down to half and that's a, hopefully for us at least, a sign of things to come down the bottom. A lot of action from the start. Copenhagen and Wolves didn't they were not just happy being in the lane, they had to sneak into the bush and actually start an early fight. Well, Unlimited having to uh, pop what he can here to get back up to decent health and he takes an initial blast there as he comes back through from Genja and Edward but the Copenhagen Wolves are forcing the minions up on towards the turret and that's going to cause them to have a bit more trouble. I don't expect Genja to really be missing much under the turret there, actually he missed <laughs> two out of three creeps, which at these early levels could make a difference. It could definitely make a difference for the first recall. The trick is always like, the, if you like 10 CS behind, it's pretty much either a portal or, or an item. But for me, interesting enough, Forgiven is still full HP, while Genji is down to 50%. This means that Genji has a very hard time getting close to CS without being poked a lot by Forgiven, who's really safe at this point. Yeah, we can see there Forgiven actually is pushing that wave through once again. Genji trying to say as safe as he can out at the back of things again just to touch on that both support starting off with that Doran shield again yeah it's it's a safe simple start none of them decided to go for the relic pretty much because they didn't want to upgrade into the heart of the uh, heart of the mountain so Doran shield is the go-to start right now and it's also pretty much the most safe you're you're more tangy and at the same time you have 10 hp regen from level one I'll tell you what though, Genja is a little bit low from this and of course still has a barrier and a flash available but Ignite for Unlimited, it must be a little bit tempting for him here as the damage actually comes down, Genja flashing low but we see that Diamond is actually headed around that mid lane here, Alexic taking a bit of a hit from Kautard, he's actually going to dive in there, Kautard caught all kinds of out of position here and that slow really holding him back, there's the flash actually coming in, oh my god, he's turned around, he's got the first blood, he does go down in the end, the axe going through diamond manages to dodge it pretty much blindly and now amazing gonna chase down where is young buck he's not come down from his top lane just yet let's see how good diamond is at dodging two men seems so far he's gonna escape unless he goes through two times no he can actually get out for free amazing though comes in saves the day counter moves slightly off him and then flashes in the end gambit do not expect him to be there he pops in and instantly boom kill on alex impressive from diamond to actually escape that one but now losing out on that first blood and Kowtowd we've seen just how good he can be with this Zyra and that first blood gonna help him out obviously not quite as powerful as it used to be but it's a first blood nonetheless and he's already back into Lania with that second Doran's ring uh, and a flask as well flask and uh, double Doran's gives him a lot of lane pressure in the early game and gives him a lot of damage actually once he delivers six marks he's gonna be able to poke Alex out and probably survive even if Alex should jump him because he can put the ultimate on himself forcing Alex to back out of the fight. Interesting enough though, if you look at the bot lane, 20 CS lead right now for Forgiven. We talked about it just before, how Genja was down to 50% and couldn't actually go close for any CS. Oh, and there we see Edward taking a big hit as well. The double shot coming out from Forgiven and Edward having to back away. Didn't burn his flash from that one. Obviously he's got good mobility here with the cannon which can keep him safe in scenarios just like that. Now, Copenhagen Wolves need to shove up this lane and recall and buy. Because right now, Genji has two Doran's Blades to only one Unforgiven. If they do stay in the lane, once Genji comes, I mean, uh, Edward actually comes back in the lane, it's a Gambit who has the advantage due to having uh, more items. 
Well, Forgiven actually uh, helping up there with Unlimited to put more damage down onto Genja, and they want to get rid of at least this wave before they decide to head back home, by which point Edward will be back into that bottom lane to support his AD carry. Let's see if they can push that through quick enough. There is Edward already past halfway mark on that lane. Meanwhile, Alex continues to take hits from Kautard Zyra in the middle. And we see the bot lane for coming was recalling now. They push in the lane a little bit too late. You could have pushed it harder and therefore come back to lane a bit earlier. Now Gambit actually has a chance to freeze it, which can be a big issue for, uh, for Copenhagen Wolves. Well, we're going to see Lucian Forgiven coming back with the Phage in there. For the very first item pick up from him. This top lane being a little bit quiet. Youngbuck versus Darian. Warwick versus Shivana. Now, a bit of an issue for Gambit is the fact that Youngbuck is actually winning the lane early on. And he's all oh, engaged on Kautar. Oh, this is bad for Kautar. He doesn't have the flash available. And Diamond this time around not going to let Kautar pick up a kill. The passive actually going straight through him. Not really any damage at this stage. And that's, well, that's just, that's Gambit. Diamond playing Lee Sin. And this is also what happens when you have to blow your flash early. Especially versus an early game jungler like Lee Sin. He can just keep coming mid lane right now and picking up kills on Kautar. And therefore getting Alex more and more fit and slowball. And that's uh, always a dangerous thing. Alexic on Kazic. Uh, Kazic, he was banned earlier against uh, Fnatic in that first game that they lost of the season. But this time around, he's been allowed to get it. And we'll see how much that comes back. If at all, that might not happen on the Copenhagen Wolves. Meanwhile, there we are, casting away in the dark. But we are going to be getting back into game in just a second, I assure you, on that one. There we go. There We're we back go. in game. Big engagement back into the dark. down on Limited. Gambit is starting to take control of this lane. Once they hit level 6, it's going to be interesting to see if they want to go for fights or what they choose to do with the cannon support. Well, they've pushed them out of there. And actually, they're coming back into this one. Olaf is up by the blue buff. Is he going to venture down? Actually, doing a little bit more of the jungle before he decides on that one or not. And he is starting to move in here. So we will see Amazing come down towards this bottom lane. What they would give now for a Thresh Lantern, I think, to get him in there faster. Uh, he's not. Oh, he is actually level 6 now. So he can come in there. He does have Ghost as well. But actually, the Copenhagen Wolves doing some good damage to Edward. But taking some back. He's been a very back and forth lane in this one. Notice how much CS Edward actually has. Genji had to recall twice where Edward could just see us alone, which also means he's going to hit level 6 before Genji. Uh, at the same time though, with the walls coming in, as you talked about, Lulu has the ability to whimsy him when he comes in range and speed him up. It's not a lantern, but it's something. Certainly a speed boost, that's for sure. And with that ghost on and uh, Ragnarok to stop any stuns or any CC coming his way, always going to be a good thing. However, Edward is now level 6. You can imagine that Genji is going to be not too far behind him as well, and that's where that combination could be put into play from Gambit. I'm really looking forward to see if they decide to go for early fights. Obviously, Lulu is not level 6 yet. Once she hits level 6, it's going to be a bit harder for him to burst down a target. But again, covering will start to recall bot lane, and once again, Gambit can freeze it. Freezing that one out, which means that it's going to be even longer. And to be honest, Edward might be well on his way to 7 at that point by the time uh, Copenhagen Wolves get themselves back in towards the lane. Second Doran's blade actually picked up by Forgiven as he decided to go back off. Alexic has got himself that Hex Drinker now, so he'll be feeling a little bit safer against Kautard Zyra. Yeah, the Hex Drinker pretty much means that Kautard can't really kill him 1v1. In a 2v2 scenario though, the Hex Drinker doesn't really do anything against Olaf, but so far now, just 1v1 based, Alex is doing fine. He's getting a lot of farm, and the more farm he can pick up now, the stronger he will be for the first few fights. And those first few fights, we're almost 10 minutes into the game, probably aren't that far away. We well, see that amazing throwing his axe off towards the dragon, and they're going to start it. Great call by Copenhagen Wolves. They see Genja and Edward recalling from the bot lane, and immediately they call dragon. Gambit, even if they knew, couldn't even contest this one, because it would only be Diamond and Alex left. Great call by Copenhagen Wolves. Super Mega Death Rocket actually came through there, but, well in vain really didn't do much and that will be the first dragon of the game going over to the wolves it puts them a seven and a half th uh, hundred gold in the lead seven and a half thousand would be a bit drastic at this point a little bit but diamond actually is farming really well right now and he also picked up two kills he's ahead in cs from Olaf, even though we haven't actually seen Olaf do much except for the counter gank in mid lane so it's gonna be interesting to see though how hard or how much uh, diamond actually can do with this gold Oh, Unlimited and Edward now back into the lane. We see the Amptome actually for Edward on this one. Let's see 
how much that really puts uh, things into effect. Throwing those shurikens are actually taking a big hit there. As he maybe went a little bit too close for comfort. But look at this. Diamond, he's headed, he's headed around the side. Olaf's on the top side of the map. Well, there's a pink ward there to stop them. But it'll be taken straight out after being put down. He can kill the pink ward now. Oh, she jumping in mid. Uh, look at that. Half HP gone already. And there are the strangled thorns. And Alex Sitch flashes just out of range. Passive dodged as well. Olaf came charging down with the ghost running. But amazing. Won't get into range. And he needs to be careful himself here now. We've got Lee Sin coming around. The kick is up for Diamond. But will he be able to get around the top side of him? Bottom lane is being pushed out. But I think Olaf has managed to escape up on that top side. I think the bottom's safe as well. Now, Kautard values getting a Fiends as his first item so high that he hasn't actually built any armor in the lane. Meaning, Alex can jump on him and pretty much burst him down from 100% to zero within a few seconds. And that's exactly what just happened. The flash as well took Alex. It's just out of range of those strangle thorns, which meant that he pretty much survived because if that would have landed, Olaf was right on top of him. But I have to question this a fiend build as the first item for Kautard. He's against pretty much an all AD team except for the cannon and, yeah, let's say Warwick. But he decides to get their fiend so, much, uh, so early and maybe it's going to actually backfire even more than he's done already. Well, he's sat at 1-3-0. In fact, well, you don't need to be a genius to work out the three kills that Gambit have. All have come from Kautar. Two of them for Diamond, one now for Alex Hitch. And we can see what that's really offered him in game. The Hex Drinker was there before, but now there's a Brutalizer and a Vamp Scepter on top of that. Now, Brutalizer for him means he can go for a Tiamat into a Hydra, and he can just wave clear, wave clear, wave clear, and he can also split push very fast. So, Alex is off to a great start to this game. Diamond is off to a great start. The only issue for them right now, Gambit, and it's not actually even an issue because Edward has just picked up the farm that Ginja is behind. Yeah, that's certainly true. 19 to 2 if you look at the supports, and that is pretty much the exact amount between them. And there is Alex jumping in once again to Kautard. He's managed to get towards his turret, but as the ulti gets popped there, Alex says thank you very much. He'll just jump back with the reset. And this can just keep happening again and again unless Copenhagen Wolves reacts, puts Amazing in just around the middle, ready to go in if he should jump. Right now he picks up the blue buff for himself because why would you put it on Kautard if he can just die so easily? Yeah, he's dying all the time. Obviously, just died a second ago, so he wasn't even around there and you don't want to even risk losing that blue buff at this point towards Alex and having one on Diamond as well just to cause you a bit of a double trouble effect. Now, Copenhagen Wolves has two options. One, the one I talked about before, keep amazing around the mid lane, ready to go in if Kautar should get jumped on. We do see Diamond Hole coming down the bottom. He might actually want to dive. Well, why not? Unlimited is at half HP right now, and he was spotted by a ward there. <laughs> Those boots mobility making it look quite comical as he runs in, runs straight back out, but he's still thinking about this one. He's still hanging around by that tribush area, and they keep getting a slight bit of vision on him. He'll lose it now, though, as he started to recall and then realize, actually, you know what? I'm going to head up here. Spot's amazing. He's got a ward down of his own and throws another one because he didn't quite throw that one over the wall before. Ah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Now, the only other option, if they don't want to keep Amazing around the mid lane, is to rotate Kautard around. They can take their bottom lane, put it mid, 2v1 versus Alex, and then keep swapping back and forth. It's not ideal, especially because Gambit is going to get even more free farm from that. Yeah, and that, that could be a problem. I mean, Genja, the fact that he's been behind this entire time, it's going to allow him to start slowly catching things up. He's added boots into his uh, repertoire of items right now, something that Forgiven currently doesn't have. And Gambit doing nothing but pressure in this turret at this stage. Gambit right now is playing the early game absolutely perfect. Due to all the pressure they have mid lane, Diamond now can focus on other lanes, which means when he's near bot lane, Gambit can just push the tower all they want. They don't even care if all of it's there. If he should engage on them, then Diamond will come in in time and turn the 3v3 around. And look at one big item picked up there. Blade of the Ruin King, first of all, for Youngbuck here. So going for that extra damage to try and make a bit of a dent onto Darian in the top lane. It's simply just so he's having more impact in top lane. We see Amazing really go for it. No, he just opts to wave clear. Right now, Copenhagen Wolves isn't really doing too much on the map. Amazing has to stay bot lane to defend, otherwise the bot tower is going to fall at the same time. In the top lane right now, Darian is actually caught up in CS. Yeah, and Diamond, funnily enough, while that all was going on, he's in his own jungle, just farming, farming, farming away. Kautard, he still doesn't quite have his flash available, by the way. That has still got a little bit left on his cooldown. And, well, he's going to be playing defensive until that comes up. And 
probably even after that he'll be staying playing defensive. I think Qatar at this point just wants to stay back and he just wishes nothing more is going to happen this game. He already died four times. Alex has shown he can just jump on him whenever he wants to. Now the top lane though, it's going to be interesting to see the further we get into the game if Darian can keep holding his 1v1 versus the Shivana. Well, we'll see about that now because Shivana is starting to push in there. We can see the gold difference specifically between these top laners hanging about 400 and the turret itself is incredibly low already. And that's really without much outside interference at all. These Junglers have been all around the mid lane on that bottom lane. This is actually going to be a free drain for the, for Gambit. The bot lane of Koei Wolves not there. Amazing is not there. They might no. They're not even actually going to get the time on this one. Good play by Gambit and a, a little bit issue for them. You just talked about it. What's the top lane? The tower is going to go down very soon in favor of Youngbok unless Diamond actually starts going up there to try and stop it. Darian's actually trying to put a bit of a shield in between him and that turret to keep it alive for as long as he possibly can. The minion's actually going in there. There is actually the first turret of the game going down to Gambit in the bottom lane. Top turret is still alive. Darian has managed to hold on to that one, but he's recalling, so it's probably not going to last another way. All of ghosting in. Uh, is he going to be able to catch Edward out from this one, though? That's the question for it. Actually, a lot of damage coming in. Has popped his ultimate as well, so the stun's not going to affect him whatsoever. But here comes the teleport. Here comes Warwick down onto this bottom lane. Where's he going to go? He decides to go for Forgiven. They need to keep pushing through on this one, though. Meanwhile, Amazing being hit by Diamond off to the side. There's Edward charging in. There's the ultimate coming out of him. To the have the damage there's the super mega death rocket edward picks up the kill they're not done just yet though warwick coming here comes diamond he lands the queue gets another one he goes low and now forgiven's gonna go down as well and meanwhile alex is fighting versus a cutter in the middle of the of the lane and he, they go one for one but all in all Amazing fight from Gambit and Botlane. They do lose the top tower for it though, but they pick up three kills bot lane and Alex takes one. They're gonna go for that inner turret in the top lane, in the bottom lane, sorry. They've lost their inner turret in the top lane there to Youngbuck, as you mentioned. Youngbuck's still gonna push through, but Gambit are gonna secure this one. That's a, a trade that they'll happily take, I suppose. Take the turrets, one apiece, and the kills. This is such an aggressive game. Everyone is just making plays everywhere. Every time Kobe tries to do something, Gambit is there. They respond instantly, and they manage to pick up kills to towers. Yes, Youngbuck did a great push because of the TP from Darien, but all in all, still worth it for Gambit. Well, here is that kill once again from Alex onto Kautard. Actually, yeah, I'm actually going to trade one for one. Very good ultimate coming out from Kautard, knocking Alex off right at this point. I keep chasing him though he's actually low, and it's going to be interesting to see if he's actually the passive and try to pick it up. Nope. Ignite and the uh, auto attacks just before he actually went down there. So, one apiece, pretty much perfect for them, actually. Uh, for Kautard, at least, I say for them. Obviously, Kautard getting the bounty there that Alex had worked so hard to uh, build up. In the meantime, we saw a bit of a rotation around to the mid lane now from the Copenhagen Wolves. Now, Copenhagen Wolves actually managed to keep almost up in goal, mainly due to Youngblood picking up the two towers, but also due to them in every lane except for mid lane, keeping up in CS. Now, what is the next move from this one? It's Darian coming in. There is the uh, wild growth put down, but they're gonna lose Kautard almost instantly in that fight. There's a super mega death rocket unlimited. He's gonna fall as well. And look at Darian here. Mac uh, not not knocking jumps out of them. Youngbuck though, Doug's finally turned that one around. Darian going super low. The Colin finishes him off on the last couple of bursts. And that will be a two for two in middle. But maybe the Wolves have got enough for the turret. And Genja wasn't even there for the fight. Alex going in. Oh, he's coming in. He's managed to get his first reset, but the second one will be used to get out. Diamond will get off to a ward as well. What is he done? He must be surely here from this one. Alex is having to recall, and Diamond is going to have to try and save this turret. Forgiven can actually pick up this tower. Genja is still far away. It was 4v5, and actually unlimited, misled his ultimate. He hit it on Amazing, who didn't even take damage instead of Kautar because Kautar got kicked away from him. And instead, Amazing was there to take the ultimate from unlimited. But all in all, great move by Kobe and Bulls, but at the same time, it was only a 4v5. 4v5, and you have to wonder well, how different that would have possibly been. Uh, should Genja have actually uh, been around in that one? Funnily enough, Edward's at 2 1 2 now. On himself, 25 CS in there as well, which will make him a happy bunny. 
Now he has gone for the magic pen boots. I said him to pick up haunting guys as his next item. So he clearly he wants to go for some AP. Maybe he's even gonna try to go for Sonya's later in the game. But so far for now, he's just rushing early magic pen, which gives which gives him a lot of damage. Oh, Darren going in. Oh, going straight in towards Kowtar. The zap comes down, and well, Stranglethorns did come in in the end, but not enough whatsoever to keep Kowtar alive. And that is another kill. This time going around on towards Jinx and Jungbuck here, gonna be chased down by Alex. It's the blade of the Ruin King stealing away that movement speed, but the Wolf is on the hunt here. Darian tried to get in there, but. He was slowed down by Lulu and put a ward in there. Pink was used pretty much instantly by the Copenhagen Wolves, so they keep that one. But look at this, Gambit wow. with Kowtard being down, with that massive AoE ultimate being down. They go for the Baron. Unlimited might have spotted it, so he's coming into it. If he wards it, he can stop the Baron from Gambit, or at least try and force a fight. Bit risky move from Gambit right here though, but Kowtard, as you said, is still dead. He has to run all the way from base. They don't have too much damage on, damage on Nash, though. Are they gonna trust themselves with this one? We see there that Olaf trying to run in there from the side. Actually, will throw the axe in. He's gonna try and go straight in towards Baron, but it's Gambit that picked that one up. We will see Youngbuck go down. That is very bad news. That's the big tanky man. Olaf was down as well. They're actually gonna try and lock down Forgiven, who turns around, puts a big blast in there. Edward goes very, very low, gets the shield from Diamond to stay alive. Alex will jump over to Forgiven, and that will be another kill for Gambit. Things just went from bad to worse for Copenhagen Bulls. They did spot the national was, was being taken. And Macy was there. He tried to come for the shield. I think it was a bit of a misplay by him. He could actually have taken the fight instead of just rushing through them and trying to finish the Nasher, especially against the Lee Sin, who is very good at cleaning up or getting the Nasher due to the fact that he can actually cure it and then he can cure and smite for the extra burst in the end. Uh, but all in all, Copenhagen Bulls, a bit of a desperate move for them to try and go in and steal it. But in the end, they couldn't actually do much more except for maybe take the fight and try and win it. Try to win the fight, which was already a, a disadvantage for them with Kaltard going down just prior to that. One thing that must be scary, I mean, it, just generally the game looks pretty bad for the Copenhagen Wolves at this point. But look at Alexic, 6-2-4, got that Hydra in there, picked himself up a pickaxe now. They're going to be taking another dragon here, which Genja is quite happily soloing. And it's just a matter of time before Alex goes back, finishes his last whisper, starts working on most likely a Garden Angel, and then he just becomes this absolute monster. Once he gets the last whisper, he can kill anyone on Comega Wolves' team, even the Shivana. Varian also at 3 1 4. He's got those two major tanky items in there with the Spirit Visage with the Sunfire Cape as well. And looking like he's actually headed up to, uh, I'm gonna guess I'd say that Wit's End here. Yeah, it definitely looks like a Wit's End. It's an item we don't actually see too much of anymore, but it's always been great on Warwick. And Darian has gone for full tank so far, so it's a little bit like you predicted. And certainly not scared of getting his hands dirty and getting right into the middle of these fights. Edward himself, 2-1-6 now. That haunting guys that we uh, talked about earlier is now in position for him. Genja also adding the last whisper into the Bloodthirster and Zeal from a little bit earlier on. Generally, a position that I think Gambit will have to make mistakes in to lose now. Yeah, right now it's, it's definitely Gambit's game to lose. I mean, if they go for maybe a risky or greedy dive, they might be caught up by Koming Wolves. It is very hard to dive versus a Syrah due to an ultimate. If you put that around, when the dive starts, you knock people up in tower range, you can actually turn the fight around. But, so far, Gambit was very strong. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's Alex H getting in there, even too fast for our cameraman as he just dives straight on top of him. And that's the danger for Kaltard as well, I think, at this point. You said that he can get the Stranglethorns down, but if he gets even, you know, remotely jumped on by Alex, he's probably going to get popped instantly. Yeah, and Gambit has the opportunity right now, due to Alex being so fit, that Darren can just instantly hold on a target. Alex will jump and finish up. He's jumping again. Yeah, goes in actually this time on towards Kaltard. This time, though, he's taking a lot of damage and he's not going to get the resets. Young, but we'll dive into the back as well. They finally get the shutdown onto him. Diamond doing a good job at the back, though, and Genja, meanwhile, has just thrown everything at them. He gets the movement speed and now surely Unlimited has to flash away. They decide to change over towards Forgiven who actually is doing a great job here to fend off Gambit. Now we talked about this. Gambit could potentially dive this and Komei Wolves had the chance to maybe pull it back. But Gambit is so far ahead right now and Darren is so tanky. He just tanked the tower through the whole time and Gambit came out two for one. Colin actually coming out not really doing much of a uh, dent into that Gambit health bars. Yeah, they decide to just stick around, pick up their fifth turret of this game. 
And that mid lane all the way back to the inhibitor. The bottom lane only has an inhibitor uh, turret remaining as well. And as I said, going at the moment from bad to worse for the Copenhagen Wolves, though you have to say that kill onto Alex, certainly a welcome one, but they had to use so much just to stop that from uh, happening, for him stopping him getting the kills there. They had to put everything on getting the kill on him. Once again, though, the ultimate from Unlimited actually hit the wrong target. He was supposed to ultimate Kalthard once again, but Kalthard flashing away actually made him ultimate on Shivana. Now, Kalthard ended up dying later on, so potentially could have changed the fight if he actually had the ultimate on, on Kalthard. Well, let's have a look down some items that have come in here recently. That Wits End has now been finished by Darian. To add into things, Kaltard still not being able to uh, move on to that needlessly large rod item. I think Azonia's at this point would be <laughs> a little bit handy for him, considering how things have been going down. Now, Kaltard has two options. You can either say, oh, nope, we'll actually go for this one. Yeah, but they're just going to bait them in here, surely. Darian actually taking a lot, I, I want to say a lot of damage, but it wasn't really a lot of damage. It took a lot of what should have been damage, but because he's so tacky, none of it actually makes a difference. Now, back to Kautar, he has two options. Either he goes for Sonya, he tries to survive team fights, or he builds the death cap and he just says, I just want to do as much damage as I can before I die. Gambit transition now around, can the pick up his in here? Well, they're certainly going to be focusing straight on that one. A Hugh has landed here on towards Unlimited, and they're not going to go for it. The kick actually will go in there. There's the dive in. Alex, oh, he doesn't get a reset from that one. Actually, it was the ultimate use on himself there. The jump coming back out, though, as Forgiven goes down as well. And Alex Hitch at about half HP, actually less than half HP, could be in a little bit of trouble, but they just want this in him. And meanwhile, this happened. Forgiven dies as well, meaning it's a 5v3 for Gambit. They can... They were going to try to at least pick up the top tower right here. They should be, get, be, be getting it pretty uh, freely. And now Nash is coming up in 1 minute and 15 seconds. What will be the next move for Gambit? That is the big question right now. Well, currently after this one goes down, there's not a single turret left for Copenhagen Wolves that lies outside of their base. We do see that the Zonis Hourglass now has been finished for Kautard. We'll see how much of a difference that makes on the overall team fights that Copenhagen Wolves can produce. Yeah, the question for Carter right now is, is he just going to delay his death that's going to come anyway? If he can do that, he can obviously delay the reset from Alex, but the Sonic itself at this point, it's not going to do too much for him. I would actually probably have gone for a death cap and just try to deal as much damage as possible when the fight started. But again, he wants to prevent the reset or at least try to delay the reset from Alex. Now, let's have a look once again here. Yeah, this is Forgiven actually going down, which we missed earlier. Now... <laughs> oh, look at the damage from Genji's ultimate. It isn't execute. The lower you are, the more damage you take. And Darren can just finish this one with no worry. He's probably one of the best champs in the game of chasing. Yep, chasing all the way down to a hunger and strike finish for him. Right now, he's just pushing that bottom lane out. And with that wits in, in there, with the tankiness that he's got, some fire cape as well. Those waves do not last long with Warwick pushing them straight out there. Well, they've got everywhere to defend at this point, the Copenhagen Walls. Obviously, a super minion streaming through the mid lane means that they have to spend some resources keeping those pushed back. Now, Gamma can just take full control of the red side of the Copenhagen Walls jungle and then force the Nasher or force Copenhagen Walls to try and come and fight for it. I don't actually expect Copenhagen Walls to contest this Nasher. I think they're just going to give him for free and then try and fit, take a last fight at one of the last in hit turrets. I think last ditch defense is maybe what the Wolves will be relying on from this one. Certainly, they're not going to get anywhere near Baron as that is picked up for a second time this game by Gambit. The question is now, where do they go after this one? Actually, uh, we do see the Riley's Crystal Scepter pretty much finished for Edward now as well. He's got 63 CS and sat at 316. And Alex went for the Garden Angel. He is now pretty much both unkillable and able to kill pretty much anyone on your team within a few seconds. So, for Copenhagen Wolves right now, what they need to do is have a team fight at the inhibit turret. They need Alex to jump in, Lula ultimate the target he jumps on, and at the same time, whimsy Alex so they can instantly try and kill him. And then obviously, you have to kill him again while he resurrects. And there's also four other Gambit members, but for now, let's just talk about Alex. You make it sound so simple. It's very simple, very simple. <laughs> On paper, it's certainly simple. Whether we can see the Copenhagen Wolves pull that one out, and that would only be the start of a, a comeback as well. I mean, we're only 30 minutes into this game, just about, and 
Well, that means that it's uh, a long road ahead of the Copenhagen Wolves. That's for sure. To get back in, here comes Alex diving to forgive him. We did see the wild growth coming onto him. Oh, but the kill from the side coming in. And there is Diamond right in the middle. He's kicked one back, but Youngbuck will dive away again. Edward going to throw his ulti down. Strangled thorns don't really do anything. Genja now finally going to join the fight. This is going to be an absolute massacre for Gambit. There's a double kill, triple kill for Alex. Can he get any more? Yes, he can. Picks himself up the quadra, and that is going to be game here for Gambit. And as I said, you don't want to play against Gambit Gaming after they lose a game because they are angry. Amazing performance by Alex, amazing performance by Gambit, and amazing performance by Diamond Fox. Setting up the early kills on Kaltot, snowballing Alex in the lane. In the end, Kaltot decides to not go for any defensive items versus the Cossacks, and Alex took full advantage of it. We've seen time and time again how good Alex is with Kazik. We've seen time and time.